what if the investors they all withdraw or a lot of people would withdraw uh, at a at a bulk time like kumbaga bank runs so will, lahat, uh, yeah will the company still stand with is everything okay how does it go with with that kind of scenario Ah, yeah. So, so for eToro, um, I'm actually very, very happy and very proud to say that um, it isn't a problem for us, um, mainly because uh, we do practice segregation. So, for example, the segregation of clients' funds um, requirement siya by um, by SISEC and FCA, pero hindi siya requirement ng ASIC regulator. Um, but since we already practice it for our other two entities, we also practice it for ASIC as well. Uh, so meaning even if clients, um, a lot of clients at the same time withdraw, uh, kaya namin siyang ibigay sa or ibalik sa ating clients. Um, the main bottleneck, I would say, uh, to be honest, it's probably going to be manpower lang. Uh, because what we do is, uh, part of the regulation then kasi, uh, is um, strict uh, KYC tests or know your customer tests. Uh, for example, we can only send the withdrawal back to you. Right? If you're the investor, Marvin, then I need to send it back to you. I can't send it to your brother or your friend, something like this. Right? So it still has to be, um, there's a lot of checks or there's, there's still going to be processes for it. So maybe the bottleneck there is, um, there might be a bottleneck in terms of processing them um, on eToro side. Kumbaga, kailan namin, can we, if there's a lot of them all at the same time, um, it's going to be out of our normal, uh, normal um, uh, workload then there's probably going to be a bit of delays. But I'm happy to say that in terms of the money itself, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. In this video, let's talk about crashes in different eras and how it affected different financial institutions. Basically, how do you know if the financial institution is safe enough for you to invest in? So, in this video, we have Jeff Guo. You saw him in the previous videos last year. <laughs> uh, he's head of eToro towards the day-to-day -to -day operations in the Philippines. And we're going to take a look on how things are going. So, Jeff, how's everything in Hong Kong? Uh, we're good. We're doing quite fine. Um, we started quite early in terms of social distancing. So we started uh, Chinese New Year palang, so early February. So nowadays it's a bit normal. Uh, hopefully over there sa inyo mas okay na din. Okay naman. Everything will be, you know, we will, this shall pass. So everything will be yeah. good. And yun yung advantage for those who are uh, trading the markets. Uh, if you analyze it, you can do it. Actually, uh, the luck is from home. You know, it's one of the best times for people to learn more about trading because uh, you're not going out there and the only way for you to actually make money is to do things on top of the internet and online trading is one of them. But here's the thing, uh, because of all of this, a lot of people are scared. Then a lot of people are saying that this might be bigger than the Great Depression and it goes a lot of people are fearful that because of those things, it may cause a lot of financial institutions to collapse. Okay, right, right, right. So, my first question is basically this. Let's revisit 2008. What basically happened in 2008 to make Lehman Brothers fail? That's one of the biggest iconic crashes. So, you mentioned Lehman Brothers. Uh, Lehman Brothers, to date, even till now, 12 years later, yung bankruptcy niya was the biggest in history. So, uh, bigger than Enron even before too. So just to give a bit of context, I have the numbers here. Uh, 639 billion in assets, the si Lehman Brothers, and 619 billion in debt Shannon, uh, when it failed. Um, it At that time, it was also the fourth largest U.S. investment bank, uh, and, and it had like 25,000 employees worldwide. So they went, uh, they filed for bankruptcy um, middle of um, September 2008. So that was very, very bad. Um, that's a valid concern, actually. Uh, so what I kind of want to just give everybody an idea of is what really happened during that time. Um, so there's a lot of videos on YouTube. I'm sure there are a lot of books uh, about it as well. I myself had read some of the books. Um, there's a lot of things that went into play, but essentially um, it's related, of course, to the real estate mortgage crisis. Um, on the other hand, though, it's also bad practices. And the third one is regulation, lack of regulation actually during that time. 
Uh, so firstly, uh, I won't go too much into the mortgage, how, how it kind of works, because it's a bit long. But the second one is uh, Lehman Brothers got greedy. So basically, in early 2004, 2005, uh, maganda yung real estate market in the US, which was doing very, very well. Uh, there was a lot of optimism in the market at that time, right? Uh, even before 2008. Um, mainly because if you consider it, uh, the dot-com bubble was in 2001, right? Uh, a lot of investors lost money um, because it was technology, right? If the company or the website goes down, there's nothing that you hold. Um, that's, mainly, that's probably one of the reasons why people had great optimism in terms of uh, the real estate market. Because at the very least, you still have your property, right? My bahay ka pa rin, my lupa ka pa rin, right? So it, there was a very good build-up. Um, real estate prices were rising. Um, but obviously, the third one is lack of regulation. So a lot of the investment banks uh, at this point in time, not just Lehman Brothers, but also uh, others like Morgan Stanley, uh, Mary Lynch, right? Marami sa kanila, they just didn't, they had too much in debt uh, that they weren't prepared for the downturn. So um, what happened here is um, basically just um, to, to start, when buying houses, right, what do people really need to buy a house, right? Firstly, it's mortgages yung lupa na binili ko or yung bahay na binili ko isasangla ko sa bangko kumbaga and then I just pay it in installments right so mortgage um, Lehman Brothers actually they went and bought five of these mortgage lenders um, so they could repackage them and sell these mortgages as products to investors um, meaning si mortgage lender you could consider it maybe as, as a bank parang ganun Uh, wala na siyang pake. I can give mortgage to anybody. I don't have to consider kaya mo bang bayaran yung mortgage mo or hindi. Right? I just give you a mortgage kasi at the end of the day, bibilhin naman ng mga banko like Lehman Brothers. At the end of the day, they'll buy it. Uh, what they do with these mortgages is they put it together in one package kind of like a mutual fund. Uh, not exactly the, not exactly close pero similar to this, pinupool nila together and they, they sell these as products to investors. The problem was uh, what happens when the real estate Um, prices go down, right? Because people, um, they were giving so many mortgages and so many loans to people that couldn't pay them, right? So for example, right, pwede kong bigyan ng, uh, pwede kitang bigyan ng loan, Marvin, because I know you can pay, right? But if I give a loan to somebody else on the street, hindi ko alam kung kaya niya bang bayaran or hindi. Eventually, kung hindi na siya nakabayad, bababa yung value ng house, right? And then people start selling their houses. A lot of these happened all together. So yung products na binebenta ni Lehman Brothers, uh, tong mga mortgage products na to, it really went down in value. Um, which is okay uh, if, if you're the investment bank, right? Normally, ano ka lang naman eh, you facilitate the transactions like Lehman Brothers. Uh, hindi ka dapat masyado apektohan by here. Yung investors mo, yung bumibili ng mga products na to, sila yung affected. Pero ikaw dapat hindi. Uh, the problem was, you see Lehman Brothers themselves and a lot of the banks, They also kept some of these mortgages, or well, a lot of these mortgages in their books. Meaning sa inventory nila, ang dami rin nilang hawak. Kasi it was going up in price before, right? So why should I just, as, as a bank, why should I just give these to my investors? Ako rin mismo, I can keep them in my books para uh, basically mag-profit din ako. When the prices started going down, um, tong mga uh, mortgages in their books or tong mga products in their books, they quickly lost their value. Right before, maybe it was 100 million. Now it's less than 1 million, or now it's just 1 million alam. So you've lost 99 million, right? Um, the problem is on the other side, de ba? Para mabili mo yung mortgage, you need uh, debt, right? So may utang sila. Kung baga ng utang sila to buy these mortgages, to keep these mortgages in their books. What happens is when the mortgage value is down, and then ang laki ng utang mo, hindi mo na siya mapayaran. That's basically what happened to Lehman Brothers. Sobrang dami nilang utang. And then yung mga mortgages na or yung mga mortgage-based products na nasa books nila, uh, sobrang baba na nung value that it could, it, they just couldn't make it work anymore. Um, a lot of it is also is basically on the balance sheets. And 12 years ago, right? Um, sobrang lax pa nung regulation during that time. Uh, wala sila masyadong, uh, wala sila mas. For example, capital requirements, di ba? As a bank, you have to have X amount of capital, di ba? Para just in case maraming taong mag-withdraw sa banko, meron kang enough cash. Uh, to give it to them. The problem during this time was for these investment banks, uh, ma- uh, mababa or actually very, very low yung ano, capital requirements um, that really caused them sobrang, sobrang over-leveraged talaga nung books nila at that time. So um, that's basically what happened to Lehman Brothers. It's a very, very long story, but you can distill it to two things. Yung balance sheet nila was not good enough 
uh, and the other one is the regulation at that time was also not good enough. You mentioned Lehman Brothers, one of the biggest banks in the U.S., and those were the reasons why they closed. Will that happen again this 2020? Uh, are there enough uh, regulations to protect investors that what happened to Lehman Brothers won't happen again? Since 2008 happened, sobrang daming mga bagyong regulations na lumabas um, really to keep uh, control of these banks. So that's why um, um, early in March, uh, a lot of people were Um, you know the stocks were crashing basically. Um, but one thing that you that I'm sure you've noticed also, Marvin, is that wala masyadong nila report about the banks. Uh, mostly because yung banks mismo, even the investment banks, even the commercial banks, uh, lahat sila were very stable uh, just because of the regulations before, after financial crisis. Kumbaga, so nangyari yung financial crisis because of lack of regulation uh, and then they put regulations in place and then it basically made them healthier to weather this storm this time around. Uh, I believe it was JP Morgan. So JP Morgan was also badly hit during 2008. Um, this time around, di ba nagbibigay ng government handouts yung US? Uh, actually, sinabi ni ng CEO ng JP Morgan is they wouldn't take any of it. They're healthy enough to be able to withstand it. Uh, so that's actually quite good um, because of because of what happened in 2008. There were proper regulations now to really make them healthier. Um, the problem or the question there, kumbaga, is this is only for the banks, right? You have a lot of different companies as well. For example, airlines. Uh, airlines are very, very badly hit. I'm sure we've had reports of PAHAL, uh, Cebu Pacific. I'm sure some of our viewers, uh, a lot of our viewers maybe have had their flights cancelled or rebooked. Uh, so the airlines are hit really, really hard. Uh, so yeah, that's another question too, right? So the banks are healthy, but what about the other companies? Great question. One of the reasons why I'm asking this is so that when people start learning about investing, uh, they mm-hmm. somehow have a security that uh, they, we're better off now compared to 2008. Correct, correct, correct. Now, for those who want to start investing also, what are the things that they should look at when they're looking at a financial institution to invest in? What are If there's a checklist of things I need to see to know that this, is, this company is legit, this okay. company won't fold. How can I be secure that when I invest my money that uh, bad things may happen in the economy but I know this company will still be there? Will survive, right. Uh, so one thing that uh, is that is very good to consider, unang-una, is the sector where the company is based. For example, if you have retail, right? Retail restaurants or retail shops wherein you have costs like rent, uh, people, Uh, your inventory cost. On the other hand, you have um, other industries, naman, for example, like the airlines, where in okay, wala ka masyadong, I guess you still have um, uh, rent and all of these things, but a lot of the things that you're considering here is your cost in terms of oil. You have a lot more different things to worry about, right? Um, so one thing that you want to look at is the sector where the company operates. Uh, and my magandang metric actually tawag dito is operating leverage. So operating leverage, what it means is it's really just the relationship between a company's fixed costs and its variable cost, right? So fixed costs, yung rent mo, um, yung machinery mo also, right? So as an airline company, your fixed cost is basically your planes. And then yung, mga, yung rent mo sa airports, right? Your hangars, all of these things. Uh, yun yung fixed cost mo. Uh, on, your, on the variable ca- cost side naman, ito yung mga naapektuhan as your businesses gets more uh, sales, for example. Like your uh, FAs, right? Like your flight attendants. Kapag mas marami ka ng flights, then you need more flight attendants. Kung konti lang flights mo, then you don't need as many flight attendants or people. Uh, fixed cost, uh, sorry, variable cost is also oil. Right. If you have less flights, then you don't need a lot of oil. If you have more flights, you need a lot of oil. So it's basically operating leverage is basically the um, the relationship of these two. So for example, in a downturn, uh, kung yung sector or yung company na ini invest mo has very high operating leverage, meaning ang laki ng fixed cost niya, then it's gonna be harder for them. They're gonna be harder hit. That's why the airlines are harder hit, right? Because ang mahal ng mga like even if I get sales or not, kahit na lockdown ngayon, uh, I still have to pay my rent. Um, my machines are still um, depreciating in value, right? I still have to maintain my machines. Um, versus, for example, kung tech company ka, uh, like Facebook, I guess, um, there's not really uh, there's not really a lot of machines, uh, and most of the things there are variable naman. 
Uh, meaning uh, you can scale them up as demand comes in. So kung less demand, then I can scale down. Something like this. So operating leverage, I think uh, this for me is the very, very good um, metric to look at. Somewhere in the lines of Le- Lehman, how do we know that investment houses will also be somehow uh, stable also during this time? Ah, yeah. So uh, for investment companies, like for example, you're right, uh, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, uh, banks like this. Uh, one thing you want to look at is their uh, financials. Uh, one thing very important, as we mentioned, is their balance sheets, right? So how much leverage are they actually taking? Uh, as an investment bank or as an investment house, um, when people make trades through you, uh, kumbaga ikaw yung counterparty in some cases, eh. Right, and you have a lot of these balance sheets as well. Uh, that's why it's important that na hindi ka over leveraged, meaning your capital mo is enough to cover it, just in case na bumagsak yung value. Um, so, for example, if there's a downturn, uh, yung value ng mga investments bumagsak, merong kang enough capital to be able to hold it. Because kung hindi enough yung capital mo, you will have to sell them off at a very very low rate. And then uh, that doesn't smell good for your for your company. So uh, that, that's a good question. Because iba iba yung ano eh, iba iba yung the things that you have to look at per sector per industry. But the important thing is your balance sheet, right? And also your expenses, right? Um, as an as an investment house, your expen yung expenses mo iba versus yung expenses ng uh, ng ng any other uh, different company or in, in any other different industry. Uh, so basically, it's debt, balance sheet, and your expenses. Obviously, your cash as well. You're from eToro. Will eToro be safe in all of this? If I invest in eToro, how do I know that my money will also be secure? And siguro you can add to it also. Uh, who regulates eToro? And if there's anything that goes wrong, what protection or what safety net? As an investor. Correct, correct. So uh, that's that's a pretty good question, and uh, that's something we actually get quite often. Shempre, uh, especially during this uh, d- during this market downturn. Uh, so um, I guess one thing that I would really consider a good thing is um, it, it's pretty interesting actually is that eToro is a private company. Um, so it's well documented because so normally it's weird, right, to say that being a private company is a plus. Um, the main reason why I say that is because as a public company, nati trade ng mga tao yung shares mo eh. Meaning, if people short sell, they can bring your prices down. And also, there's added pressure on you as a company um, to deliver earnings results, right? Every three months, every quarter, naglalabas ka ng results. Uh, this leads uh, some companies, it's actually, there's actually research about it. It leads company CEOs and uh, some companies to prioritize short term gains uh, over long term. Right, because I have to meet my earnings, I have to meet my quarterly earnings. I have to do prioritize short term versus the long term. So Itoro as a private company, um, hindi pa namin kailangan problema hinto. Uh, what we can focus on is really delivering the best experience, uh, and also our uh, vision of deliver. Um, opening the global markets for everybody to trade and invest in a simple, transparent way. Basically, we can focus on that. Um, obviously, the goal for us still is to eventually be able to list and be able uh, to become public. Uh, but as of the moment, uh, basically what we want to happen is we want to be in the best position when we actually uh, go public. Uh, parang ganon. So that's one thing, I guess. Um, the other thing, um, which is what we kept talking about, is being regulated. So eToro is regulated. Uh, we're actually regulated by three different entities. Uh, the first one is um, uh, CISEC, so Cyprus Securities and Exchange Commission. So sila yon nagregulate ng ating UK, uh, sorry, e, uh, European business. Uh, that's CISEC. And then we have the other one, FCA, so Financial Conduct Authority. Uh, sila naman yun nagregulate ng aming uh, UK business, uh, ng ating UK clients. And then finally, we're regulated also by ASIC, uh, the Australian Securities and uh, investments Commission. So, sila naman yung nag-regulate ng ating Asia, uh, ng Asia business. So, for example, in the Philippines, mga Filipino clients natin, uh, they are housed under our ASIC entity, regulated by ASIC. So, we're regulated by three different entities. Um, the good thing with regulation is, as we kept talking about uh, a while ago, the good thing with regulations is, um, in order to be regulated, in order to keep your status, you have to follow certain rules. A bad way to say it is whether you like it or not, you have to follow these rules in order to become regulated, right? Uh, so one thing that uh, that's very important, I guess, for investors is segregation of clients' funds. What eToro does is we segregate your funds. So all of the deposits we get from our clients, um, it's not used to pay our expenses. 
kumbaga nakahiwalay siya sa ibang uh, bank account. So for, for for example, right? Um all of everybody's investments are in a different bank account and then my my salary, my bonus or 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 our office and everything is on a different uh, bank account, right? So what that means is for example, if clients need to withdraw their cash, uh if let's say there's an emergency or whatever, people need their money Um, they can just withdraw it without any concern na, uh, that eToro will go down because it's in a different uh, it's in a different bank account. Um, the other good thing with being regulated is um, that uh, some regulators insure the investors. So, for example, uh, SISEC and um, and the FCA uh, they insure the retail investors or basically they insured our clients. Um, for example, for SISEC they insure up to 20,000 euros. Meaning, if worst case scenario, if uh, eToro goes goes bankrupt, for example, um, as long as you have twenty thousand or below in your in your uh, balance, then you can get it back. The regulator itself will pay you back uh, up to twenty thousand euros. Uh, para siyang ganon. Uh, so it, you can kind of compare it to FDIC, uh, di ba yung mga banks natin? FDIC insured up to fifty, uh, sorry, five hundred thousand pesos. So parang ganon siya. So that's uh, that's a, actually a very good advantage of being regulated. Uh, the last part is actually kung at uh, being regulated, kung si client or si investors nat then meron silang complaints, then you can actually escalate it to our regulators. Kung baga pwede ka pumunta sa regulators natin uh, to make or to lodge a complaint against eToro. Kung baga para third party yung maga ano yung maga uh, yung maga arbit yung maga arbitrage dito parang ganon. What if the investors they all withdraw or a lot of people would withdraw uh, at a at a bulk time like kung mga bank runs or will, lahat, uh, yeah will the company still stand is everything okay how does it go with with that kind of scenario ah uh, yeah so so for eToro um, I'm actually very very happy and very proud to say that um, it isn't a problem for us um, mainly because uh, we do practice segregation so for example see yung segregation of clients funds um, requirement siya by uh, by SISEC and FCA pero hindi siya requirement ng ASIC regulator um, but since we already practice it for our other two entities we also practice it for ASIC as well uh, so meaning even if clients um, a lot of clients at the same time withdraw uh, kaya namin siyang ibigay sa or ibalik sa ating clients um, the main bottleneck I would say uh, to be honest it's probably going to be manpower lang Uh, because what we do is uh, part of the regulation then kasi uh, is um, strict uh, KYC tests or know your customer tests uh, for example we can only send the withdrawal back to you right if you're the investor Marvin then I need to send it back to you I can't send it to your brother or your friend something like this right so it still has to be um, there's a lot of checks or there's there's still going to be processes for it so maybe the bottleneck there is um, there might be a bottleneck in terms of processing them Um, on eToro side, kung baga kailan namin can we if there's a lot of them all at the same time, um, it's going to be out of our normal uh, normal um, de- uh, workload. Then there's probably going to be a bit of delays. But I'm happy to say that in terms of the money itself, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Nowadays, because of the market, we have a lot of um, new customers and new clients coming into eToro. Um, obviously, we're getting a lot of tickets as well. So, customer service tickets, customer service questions. Um, there's been, uh, we're also very open about it. There's been a bit of delay again because of manpower, because um, there's just so many new customers. So, what we're doing is we're hiring or onboarding a lot of new, uh, new customer service agents, customer service uh, manpower to really be able to support this. Even if things don't go as well, you have. Mm-hmm. Enough- Uh, cash to be able to protect people that their money. I guess what people need to know is correct, their correct. money is safe. Will I get my money back? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct. So, yeah. so yes, uh, I can say that um, we have enough cash balances because of the segregation nga, uh, to be able to return everybody's withdrawals if they ever need it. To those watching, I hope that this gives you enough info also to make the decision because at the end of the day, what I do right here is just to give you information but ultimately you will have to decide based on the information that's presented before you to be able to uh, invest because when when it comes to investing it's conviction that will allow you to actually push forward you don't, it, yeah. you don't invest just because your friend would tell you you don't invest just because you saw a video about it you have to do your due diligence and you have to study 
uh, this is my last question for people who are interested about this and uh, there's a lot of videos about eToro that it allows you to invest in uh, global markets, US markets, a lot of other asset classes. For those who want to invest in them, uh, very, very quick answer on how they can do it as well. Okay, so yeah, it's going. It's very simple. Um, I you should have a link also, but basically you just go to etoro.com. Uh, you can sign up there for a free account. So say etoro, um, when you sign up for an account, you actually get two. You get a real account and your virtual account. So real account, obviously, when you fund it, that's where the money goes. Uh, yung virtual account mo, you already have a hundred thousand inside. Um, so even if you're new, even if you just want to test it out, try it out, um, you can sign up for a free virtual account, go back to your, go to your virtual account, play around with it. If you like eToro, then you can consider depositing. If you don't like eToro, then walang, wala naman masyado na wala sayo because the virtual account is free. Uh, so I would really recommend that, um, that people um, sign up for a free virtual account. You have 100,000, play around with the platform, take maybe, in general, our customers take around um, anywhere from one day to a week to play around with the platform uh, and then they proceed from there. For those who want to, everything kasi can be accessed online. I'll put a link after this. So if you want to uh, get that virtual account, trial account, or actually start, uh, you can do everything wherever you are. So while you are in lockdown and then you, for those who want to advantage of this time that you have more time to study, uh, this is one avenue for you to be able to learn more also about how you can, I guess, explore uh, the ability to invest in other markets as well. So, right. I guess that's it. Uh, Jeff Go, thank you for being part of this vlog. Any final words for people watching this that are scared about what's happening right now? Because at the end of the day, this is something that no one planned, no one forecasted, no one thought that uh, oil will drop massively to this, <laughs> this level. Just today, yeah. oh, no one, ha, no one at the end of 2019 expected this. So, any words of advice for people? Uh, so, for me, just uh, just one thing before I go. Um, if you are unsure about the markets, whether this is the right time to start or you know if it's a good time, I would say that it's a good time, even just to start learning. But what you can do is um, at eToro, uh, go to any stock you want. Uh, just search for any stock you know facebook apple nike um, look at their charts and you'll see that um, march 15 so basically one month ago um, the drop there basically what happened in the markets uh, the stocks crashed and then look at it now uh, a lot of them have actually recovered so what a lot of people say is that when markets are down when markets are in a bad state that's actually the best time to start or even just learn mm. And what's, what's interesting about that is uh, I've been looking at Amazon, Netflix, Zoom, yeah. <laughs> the companies that a lot of people are using uh, right now because of the pandemic. They're the ones that are doing well. So there, I hope you guys got a lot from Jeff Go as well. Uh, if they'd like to contact you, I'll put your email address also below just in case they have questions. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes no problem. If they have a clarification about Lehman Brothers or what, or they yeah, want to, anything they want to ask. Or, of crashes we'll we'll try to figure it out uh, you can you can contact him directly so uh yeah. for now guys thank you so much to all of you who watch this and i hope that you guys got a lot from this or uh if you have other questions you can put it in the comment section and then we'll try to make more videos on top of that as well so that's it for now i hope this video all right thanks for having me marvin thank, thank you all again soon guys and god bless you all